Welcome to Modern Bach. So it's been an exciting preparation, checking and following all the news about the new teams coming and what's going to happen in the next thing as we have this break this weekend. But yeah, let's dig into some of the possible team changes, possible alterations and how each team I think should develop their squad for the upcoming games. I think it's going to be an ex definitely a pivotal weekend this weekend with either the All Blacks taking the title or the title both being open for the last game for the first time in a while. So it's going to be exciting to see that. So first let's cover the Australia-South Africa game. Pete Samu and Lukan Tao out for the last, for this next game. That's very sad for both of them and also makes a massive hole in the loose trio pairing of the Aussies. Something that is an essential part of the game. Obviously they still have Pocock and Hooper to fall back on the best in the business, but still it is sad to see that, and especially considering Pete Summers from a knee injury, I hope he's fine, and also Lacan from the previous um, games incident there, where with the fan, what due to his family thinks so he's going to sue his family, so all the best to him. On on that front, I think the least trio really on the Australian play is their game action. It's a case of if they get fast ball, if they can move it out to Falau and to their into Foley and that they really get stunning attack play and that's when they are the most dangerous and you can see even in the australia argentina game that that's where they hurt the most i think they couldn't keep the ball properly the argentinian forwards were powerful over that ruck and really made it hard for australia to collect as much ball as possible so that's going to be something they have to look at and with this being an issue i think it's going to be even harder so that obviously they've got ned hannigan and caleb Timo to actually fight for those that new position so we'll see how that goes i think that they both are stunning players so i have no real Preference on each side, but I think that definitely that whole breakdown area is important for Australia, and we'll see how this these changes affect that. On the South African side, we have a major problem in centre, and you can see that with what the, with, with what Rusty is calling up. He's called Ruan Nal and Lionel Mapu up, along with some other players, to come and play. He's got Vincent Koch also from the Saracens, so some stunning players coming from overseas, and obviously Ruan playing for Western Province at centre, Mapu for the Lions. Also great players, and we can see that there's a massive hole in the centre pairing. We were worried about Vili Leroux at fullback, but he's been confirmed that he'll actually be able to play, which is really good news. But I'd actually like to po posture a question. I don't think he should play the next game. I think he should maybe come off the bench 60th minute, depending on the situation, maybe not come at all. He's all uh, Rassi's already been bringing, um, pushing Willemse to actually take that position, and I think it's a good position for him. Willemse, he's got fast feet, got a stunning uh, super rugby season. So I'd actually like to see Damien Willemse play in that position with Cheston Colby being a fullback. If, if on the first plan, if the game goes well, with the comeback option of bringing in Vili where needed. I think that would be a much, much better two, two option and also gives us the ability to birth some new players in that position. We cannot depend on him throughout a whole World Cup. We will lose the World Cup that way. So I think Damien Willemse and Cheston Corby are great options there. It's good to see Vili back and I'd love to see him in the All Blacks game in Loftus, but I think this game is a good opportunity for us to blood some players. So I'd like to see that. On, on that side, obviously... Vincent Koch, also another good addition to see there. I think he adds another nice scrumming option. Him and um, Stephen Kitsoff, also good pairing. I think that'll be a good game, good good option to see. And something very important with South Africa. Scrum, scrum does well, the rest of our game does well. So on, on, the whole, on my whole prediction, that I feel Australia, their focus points needs to be speeding up the breakdown. Something South Africa did very well in the previous game against the All Blacks is they stopped them from getting those three-second breakdowns and really slowed down the game. Legally, but they did slow down the game. Australia thrives with that, and so does New Zealand. So something Australia needs to obviously see if they can counter. Vince, uh, Stephen Kutsoff did a great job of slowing down the ball. Malcolm Marks also. So we'll see how that goes. It's going to be a little bit of a... That's definitely going to be a point where the whole game is going to be decided. On top of that, I feel that Australia needs to talk to Falau. Falau cost in the last game, and they need to question whether there needs to be some kind of punishment on that. I don't think he really understands that he's part of a team. He costs the team often in Super Rugby and here, where he feels he's the, the god and he goes there. So Falau needs to question that. He's a stunning player, a legend of rugby. I'm not going to question, I'm not going to state anything against that, but he still needs to find that he's part of a team and can cost, especially in serious games, the last dying moments, you can cost the team a win. So he needs to, he needs to be look introspectively on that. Um, I think that with, with the whole thing, Australia needs to obviously focus on attacking the centre pairing. Whatever pairing South Africa feels is most likely going to be a new one, something we haven't tried before, whether it's uh, Pollard and Jesse Creel, or it's Ruan Nal, or it's Easterhazen, it's going to be a tough one. What I'd like to see South Africa play in that position, 
um, which would be very, very controversial, but I think it would be a good option, is I'd actually like to see Yankees start at fly half and Pollard an inside centre with Jesse Peel an outside centre, or even uh, Ruan Nell an outside centre. He's a strong runner, but either options there actually I don't really mind. But Jesse Peel, just for his fast feed, especially in the first half, would be a good option to see. I find Ruan Nell is a little bit more um, of a blend between, I'd say, if I was to say on the spectrum of a bullish runner versus uh, Cheslin Colby, I'd say uh, Jesse Quill is the closer to Jesson Colby, and Esther Hazen is a bull that runs through the whole China shop. And then we've got Ruan Nala nice in between. So it'll be interesting to see. And him, I think he'll link up quite nicely with Pollard. But that's also why I think to start off the game with Jesse Quill and Pollard is just a good option due to they do play in Super Rugby together. But that's what I'd actually like to see the centre period. But Australia needs to focus on that. It's going to be a new one. People are going to have to see if they can actually perform there. So for South Africa to win, do what they did last week. Slow down the ball, the breakdown. I know a lot of people don't say it's pretty rugby, but slow it down there and use the opportunities that are out for you. Make sure that you keep pushing the breakdown, pull more and more players from Australia into the breakdown and use the outside corners with great wings and great X factor in that position. So it'll be good to see from that thing. Continue the pressure. The, the rush defense from the All Blacks game really aided in pushing forward the, the, making sure they forced mistakes and didn't allow their number two or the actual pods to push around the actual uh, the, the our backline defense something that's hurt us in previous games and it's nice to see the INT starting to learn and keep in his position New, uh, New Zealand has a, a great tendency of making the attack in the inside seems so on, on that inside channel seem so hard that the fullback or the wing needs to pull in for defense and they open outside channel so it's good to see South Africa starting to their district defensive structures are starting to mature on the New Zealand Australia Argentina game, I think I would love to see Argentina win. And I know that sounds awful, and I'm not trying to be biased or anything. But the fact of the matter is, if Argentina can take this, firstly they deserve it. They've had a st st stunning string of uh, games, and the, a win in Australia, and now a win against the All Blacks would probably mean that they'd have their best. They've already had their best um, rugby challenge of all time. So good on them, and they deserve it. Nicolas Sanchez is a demon and something that I think will be a great is a great asset to him and something that they need to now look at and a great hole in New Zealand's attack was uh, an actual game plan was open this last weekend with the fact that they don't have long range kickers. Nicolas Sanchez is known for kicking them from almost anywhere and that's something that they must exploit. When you get a penalty I think they must just kick. I know that they have great X Factor runners obviously when they have the opportunity to go for it go for it but the fact of the matter is points are points and that New Zealand only lost by two last week. So every point counts and Nicolas Sanchez is a way better boot than Bowden Barrett is something that they must utilize. On that side, Bowden Barrett I think is going to have something to prove. I know that um, Kieran Reed and Brodie Retallick are not play, are not coming on the tour. So I think that'll be a bigger hole in their uh, leadership, especially with Bowden Barrett being a little bit shaky on that. I think they're going to have to question that and just make sure that they can hold their leadership. Sonny Bull, a wealth of experience uh, in the in the back line, is coming is coming on the tour, so we'll see if he plays. I'm not sure if he's going to start. I know he had a little bit of tonsillitis, so he might not start only during the later in the game. So, but I think with Sonny Bull there, it's going to be a very dangerous um, attacking, def a, a very dangerous f back line that they need to be very careful of, especially the offloads, especially the inside player. And that's with both Bowden Barrett and uh, Sunny Ball Williams being able to put Jordy Barrett into space, it's going to be a defensive effort of note from Argentina. Argentina needs to obviously look at that. that South Africa utilized the sideline very well to, to push out the pods of New Zealand and keep their number two guessing in that position. Pretty much ran him, hold off wherever he pops to. So, and it was also all ball and all tackling. So, again, Argentina needs to focus on that. It's not about tackling low on these guys. Tackle with the ball, otherwise they, there's a thousand other players they're going to pop to. Their support lines are insane. So for Argentina to win, that's why I feel they need to go. New Zealand need to just focus on the current play they're doing. I don't think they need to change anything. So I think they just found a good hole in that one moment. But it's it's a fact of any, on either day that game could have been won or lost. So it's going to be all about that. Conditioning for both teams is very important. Argentina need to capitalize on the fact that New Zealand have traveled quite a distance to get to them. Hopefully the last 20 minutes won't turn the tables as much as they did in the previous game. But yeah, I think it's going to be exciting. My predictions for the tournament this weekend will be, I think South Africa will pip it with about 10 points. The confidence factor and not just Australia questioning their team at the moment is something that's going to definitely lean to South Africa's side. So I feel South Africa is going to pip it there by 10 points. On the other side, New Zealand will probably take it by about only five, though. I think the travel, along with the, the little bit of confidence shaking, and Argentina's massive confidence coming into the game, and their uh, long-distance range kicking, especially at home, 
will really help them. And the home crowd in Argentina is a tough one to beat. So yeah, that's my prediction. Thank you very much, guys. Enjoy your week, and we'll I will be bringing out another video on the uh, on the actual team selection and how I think that will factor into it. But yeah, thank you very much, guys. Please subscribe if you like this video. Please uh, share and yeah, comment down below if you feel you have any other things to add.